Um, so obviously the last time you played Illinois, you were a missing hunter. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess how much of that tape is valuable uh, versus, all right, let's, you know, we've got to have a completely new game plan. No, I think it's all extremely valuable. I mean, we battled, we battled our butts off that game. And, um, you know, we were, uh, I want to say at the, at the uh, maybe six or eight under minute mark, we were, it was a possession of tying or going ahead at one point. So, you know, it's all very valuable, uh, doing a lot of similar things that they were doing before, uh, but their emphasis you know, is, is still, you know, being able to get the ball inside to the big fella and, and obviously, you know, surrounding them with guys that can make shots. So uh, the challenge is the challenge and uh, we'll, we'll do our best to prepare. Thanks. Move over to Michael Cohen from the Detroit Free Press. Hey, Saadi. Uh, obviously, the game the other night was uh, a big success, and, and Phil talked about sort of the communication and some of the adjustments that were made. I guess from your perspective, why do you think that the changes that you guys made to the communication in terms of who was relaying the messages, why did that work so well, and how do you keep it going now if you can? Well, I, I, I believe our staff just has great synergy, you know, amongst us, and, uh, you know, Phil did a tremendous job of, of leading us. And uh, our guys did a tremendous job of, of following uh, the game plan that evening. And that, that's really how we've been wired, you know, uh, since day one. And uh, uh, Coach Jawan has all put us all in positions uh, to be successful as coaches, as players. Um, and um, that's, you know, we, we have that, that mentality. You know, we, we, practice, we try to practice what we preach and, you know, no different next man up. It applies to our staff as well. Next, we'll move over to Zach Shaw from Michigan Insider. Uh, Sadi, the, the numbers have suggested you guys are doing a much better job at limiting three-point attempts uh, defensively. You know, Illinois, they, they have guys who can, who can really go off from three, I guess. How, how, what have you seen in that development, and how important is that to this defense being successful overall? Well, it's always been a, a emphasis for us, you know, as long as I can remember of myself being around here. And then obviously, um, you know, these last few seasons, just really protecting that three point line uh, and, and doing as much as we can with contesting shots, uh, whether it's twos or three. So, uh, again, a lot of it is guys being dialed in to the scouting report, uh, trying to take away actions of our opponents. Uh, and, and that's really the gist of it. Uh, we are open, everybody. Anybody got anything? Coach, can you kind of talk about how important it is to have a four game stretch at home where you guys have only played two games, uh, no more than two games in a row? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's an ideal situation, you know, for the for the scenario that we're in as it relates to finishing our season. Uh, we know we still have work to do as it relates to, you know, trying to get as many wins to put us in position to be in position, as we like to say. And, um, you know, we have a high level schedule. Uh, this is this is a league where there's no night offs and. Um, to be able to finish our last four out of five games at home, um, even with the challenge, is, is, is something that we uh, really look forward to and really embrace. So, but, uh, you know, we know we got a tough opponent in Illinois coming in uh, this Sunday. And so we will uh, do our best to, to prepare and get our guys mentally and physically ready uh, to go battle and win that game. We'll move over to Alejandro from Michigan Insider. Saudi, after after the game uh, against Rutgers, Phil Martelli spoke very positively about uh, you and Howard Isley. I'm curious if you heard those comments and, and what your reaction was to, to what he said about you two both being future head coaches. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I heard him. And, um, you know, that, that speaks to Phil and who Phil is. Uh, he's been a, a great colleague, a great mentor, a great friend uh, throughout our three years here. Uh, but again, uh, I think, <laughs> you know, he, he definitely, um, it, it's definitely a collective effort, you know, and, and as much as we appreciate, you know, the, the soundbite 
uh, from Phil. Um, you know, we're, we're all hands on deck around here and we're going to do everything we can to uh, support Coach Juwan. We're going to do everything we can to support Coach Phil uh, in his role uh, in the interim. Uh, and we're definitely doing everything we can to um, uh, keep as seamless a, a, a transition as we can uh, for our players uh, until we get back to whatever, you know, the normalcy uh, of, of Coach Jawan coming back. But, you know, that's our job. Like, that's what we're hired to do. We're hired to, to, to do our jobs and do it, uh, and do it well. And, um, you know, we, like I said, to start, we just have great synergy within our staff. And, and um, you know, hopefully that was reflective uh, the other night. Coach, we'll move back to uh, Michael from the Free Press. Hey, Saadi, the, there was that stretch in the middle of February where you guys just had game after game after game, you know, four and seven days and things like that. Um, it seemed like at the, at the beginning of that stretch, there was a little bit of an effort to try and manage some minutes for guys if possible. But then toward the end of that stretch, you know, plus with the, the suspensions, the starters have had to play, you know, 38, 39 minutes a game. And, and I guess I was just curious how you think uh, fatigue levels are over the course of the season. And, and what are the things that those guys do in between games to try and make sure they can get back to as close to 100 percent as possible? Well, I think if you talk to anybody in their program right now, there's some level of mental and physical fatigue. Right. But you know, we're in the home stretch of the regular season. So uh, rest, recovery, uh, mobility, uh, uh, our, our health and wellness team, uh, uh, Chris Williams and, and, and John Sanderson have done a tremendous job uh, in their roles of, of getting our guys and keeping our guys ready uh, for games. So, you know, I mean, th this is what we're wired for, right? Like this is what you prepared all summer all spring, all fall, and all year, you know, to be in position to to win games late in the season and put yourself in position uh, for postseason play. So, um, you know, we're going to continue to to uh, prepare on the court and then also uh, take that same attitude in preparing our bodies and our minds off the court uh, through our recovery. We'll move back to Andrew from Unlive. Saudi, I know, I know the game isn't all about scoring, but I guess speaking specifically about about offense, like you, you guys know what you're going to get from from Hunter and Eli. They've been so consistent, um, mm -hmm. but you know some of the other guys, it's kind of up and down as far as as far as the points. Uh, is is it fair to say you'd like a little more consistent consistency from you know a third or fourth guy, um, you know, down the stretch here? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you hit the key word on the head: the consistency, right? And uh, when we're shooting the ball. Uh, the way we shot the other night, we're really tough, you know, because it adds another element to our team, you know, on both sides of the ball, which 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 makes us us hard to beat. And so, you know, whether we're hitting shots from threes, whether we're attacking the paint uh, and getting uh, scoring through our paint touches, um, you know, we do we do need that level of consistency, and it's not going to come from the same guy every night, and that's okay, you know, because these guys do a tremendous job of working. Uh, individually on their game, as well as, you know, what we do through practice. So um, uh, we do need guys to step up at this time of the year uh, with consistent play. Do you think you're more likely uh, to get that on this roster, given that you got two freshman starters, uh, you know, to Kobe and, and Frankie come off the bench as, as freshmen? Like there's, there's guys that have, you would think, I guess, you know, more of a, a ceiling than, you know, the senior say. Yeah. Well, you know, we always talk about outliers at this time of the year, mm -hmm. right? And so we need one or two outliers to step up. And again, it's not going to be the same one or two guys uh, uh, game in and game out. But what we are confident is in uh, their preparation uh, that they've done uh, going into each and every game. And like I said, these guys work hard, um, not just during practice, but they also you know, are in in their own time, you know, sharpening their 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 uh, their uh, craft to to be ready when their names are called. Thanks. We'll move over to uh, James Hawkins from the Detroit News. Hey, Saudi, I know for for Coach Martelli, it's kind of bittersweet circumstances that have kind of led to him having to take over as acting head coach. I guess just what have you seen from him since Monday and just kind of how he's handled everything and guided the team since then? 
Phil is the legend. Like that's <laughs> like that's what he does. You know, it's, it was it was yes, the circumstances were not ideal. Um, and but you know, to Phil's credit, this isn't his first rodeo. You know, and uh, he stepped right in very seamlessly. Uh, and it and it wasn't you know I don't even think it was an adjustment for any of us because uh, again I, the one one of the things that's great for working for and working with Coach Juwan is that he really empowers us as assistants to uh, coach and so um, the guys are used to hearing our voices their guys are used to hearing our voices in leadership roles in different parts of practice or, or games and whatnot so. Um, I don't think it was as much of a adjustment as as others might think, uh, but um, you know when you've been doing it as long as Phil Martelli has been doing it, as the old saying, it's just like riding, getting on a bike, and pedaling again. And I think Phil did a great job in leading us uh, uh, the other night, and um, I know that and I'm confident in his leadership uh, over these next couple of weeks until we can get. Um, our big dog back uh, sitting in that seat. And I guess in, in the aftermath of everything that happened on Sunday, do you, do you get the sense that that whole incident maybe brought the team closer together? You know, you hope it does. I mean, I, uh, if there's, there's is definitely an opportunity for either things to, you know, uh, go either kind of way. And to our guys' credit, we were locked in. Um, you know, uh, guys were definitely committed to staying the course and, um, we know we got, we have work to do and nobody's going to feel sorry for us. So, um, and nor do we feel sorry for ourselves. So, you know, again, we're wired to show up to work the next day and do our job. And that's what we're going to continue to do. We'll go back to Zach from, uh, the Michigan insider. Sadi, I'd, I'd love to get a little perspective from you on, on Caleb's season so far. That certainly there's been ups and downs and then maybe the comfort and assertiveness that he showed uh, the other day. Yeah, and, you know, I, I, uh, Caleb has, has definitely grown, you know, as the season has, has, has gone on. And, you know, you, you expect it. Like every first-year guy is going to have the ebbs and flows of the season. So, you know, as long as we're not freaking out as a staff, that's going to help him stay balanced, you know, in, in who he is and, and what he believes about himself in terms of confidence. Um, I mean, the kid plays, you know, 30 something minutes a game and um, he's had some great nights and he's had some, you know, not so great night, but that's basketball. All right. And that's OK. But what what we are uh, that what we can hang our hat on is that the, the dude comes in and works every day. Um, he's been committed to the growth mindset. And when you do that, you, he has, he's put himself in position to have nights like he did uh, the other night. And, you know, we're however many games into the season now. So like he's, he's, he's got some wear and tear underneath his belt now that, um, you know, hopefully that consistency that Andrew talked about earlier, uh, you know, uh, reigns through. And so uh, we're excited, you know, we're excited for him and all the other uh, guys on our team as we as we go down this home stretch. We'll move back to Michael from the Free Press with another one. Hey, Sadi. Um, Illinois has lost four games since Big Ten play kind of really started in early January, and three of those losses were games when Kofi wasn't able to make it 30 minutes due to foul trouble. Is making him work defensively uh, just as important to stopping him as it is trying to defend him straight up on the other end of the floor? No question. I mean, he's such a, a, a great player that if you don't make him work on the defensive end, then you're just, you know, you're putting yourself in a bad position on the, on the offensive end because he is so dominant down there. And so, yeah, you know, anytime you, we got a lot of great, great players uh, in this league, it was funny because I was watching the the game last night, and they're all trying to figure out who's going to be the Big Ten Player of the Year. Well, shoot, just make it cold because all of those guys have a, have a reason uh, uh, to have their name called uh, for that honor. Uh, but going back to your question, uh, yeah, with elite level guys like Kofi, you you, you really got to make him uh, work on both ends of the floor. Thank you. We'll go back to James from the news. Hey, Sadi, I know you guys have a busy stretch coming up and don't know if we'll have availability before the final home game and senior night, but I just wanted to ask something about Adrian. 
Um, I know his career hasn't unfolded maybe as he had, as he has hoped. And I mean, plenty of guys in his position would have looked to transfer, go elsewhere. Um, I guess just how has he handled all that? And I guess what's it say about him that he's kind of stayed here and stuck it out? I mean, I, I think you just said it. Like the kid has shown a tremendous amount of resilience uh, about himself and throughout his career. And, um, you know, he's had a great attitude uh, in practice, uh, a great attitude in the locker room with his teammates. Uh, you never see him down. You never see him pouting. And, you know, everybody's role is, is different, but his impact that he leaves uh, in this program, you know, the kid, is, he, he, he has a Big Ten championship underneath his belt. He's been to the NCAA tournament. So, you know, um, he has all the respect for me and how he's handled his experience. Uh, and, and I would, I think there would be worse things to say, you know, to be able to walk away and say, I have a, a degree from the University of Michigan and a couple of uh, uh, Big Ten championships and banners uh, from teams that I've played on hanging that, you know, 10, 20, 30 years from now, when he comes back for a reunion, uh, he's able to to look in the, in the rafters and and look at uh, the of the impact that he's had in this program. Right, you kind of just touched on, I mean, people outside the team, they might just see he doesn't play much and assume he doesn't make much of a difference. But I mean, could you maybe just shed some light on what he's been able to do behind closed doors and maybe the, the difference he's made for the program during his time here? Yeah, I mean, whether whether it's, you know, just being that veteran leader in the locker room, whether it's being a guy who's helping out our scout team, you're not going to find a better shooter, you know, that you can replicate some of these guys, you know, like a plumber coming up this weekend, uh, this weekend. Uh, so he, he gives us an opportunity uh, to win games. And at the end of the day, that's what we're all here for. Right. That's the all in mentality. And like I said, everybody's role is different, uh, but the contribution remains the same and the impact remains the same of the end goal. Coach, I think that's going to do it. But before we go, we just want to know how have you been able to balance coaching and doing every, everything that you do with the pit gymnastics updates coming <laughs> on your phone? <laughs> you know, it, it's... Uh... It's, it's been a challenge, but it's, it's been very exciting uh, to be able to uh, watch my daughter and her teammates at Pitt. Uh, they're having a tremendous season. They actually compete tonight uh, at Texas Women's and LSU. So I think she's really excited uh, about that. And, um, you know, hopefully I'll be able to see her live and in color, but between my phone, my iPad, the computer or some live stream, you know, uh, when she's competing, uh, I'm trying to get as many updates from my wife as I can if I'm not watching it live. So I appreciate that, that question. All right, coach, we appreciate your time. Have a great uh, meeting and practice and we'll see you on Sunday. All right. Thank you, fellas.